Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. Oh, the Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying to you, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone singing, Lord, kumbaya. Someone singing, Lord, kumbaya. Someone singing, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's happy, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's happy, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's happy, Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, Lord. Kumbaya. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come, Lord. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Oh, Lord. Come by here. Those words are often made a mockery of because if somebody's going into singing Kumbaya, my Lord, it's a very church camp thing and it's like a, a Christian thing and people will make a mockery of it because who really stays with the Lord and stays with church anyways because there's all hypocritical people, people that have failed this uh, generation. This is a bit of an eyesore. I want to... Uh, ask for you to please forgive me because I'm not pretty enough. There's some people out there that will reject me because of this, because I'm not pretty enough. But they don't care that I'm an honest man. They don't care that I am in the seat of my soul, which is a very dark place most of the time. But because they see this, they run the other way. And it puts me, unfortunately, in a situation of not feeling connected, not feeling wanted not having proper affections given to me. I'm a gay man, and I um, am a minister, one of the founding fathers of the New World Christ Church. And having a bit of a public and personal private uh, commonality with people, I try to always be right down to earth. I don't like to say that I preach or give sermons. I like to say teaching, lecturing, talks, dialogue, elevated discourse. But when somebody is saying, my Lord, I hear somebody crying and kumbaya, my Lord, come bless them, Lord. But now that they're praying, Lord, still bless them, Lord. Now that they're singing, they must be happy and they're no longer crying. They're not praying. Now they're singing and they're happy. Come, Lord, come. 
we have somebody who is in a good place. And if they've been rejected or not because of an eyesore, this is like a bacterial thing coming from whiskers. I can't, I've been trying to grow a beard, but I can't grow a beard because I get some type of bacteriaitis, folliculitis, something in the molecule, the follicle level of the whisker. And I say that as though I have to tell you, just in case you would think I have AIDS. It's 2018. A lot of rejecting, for sure. But I wanted to talk with you today on, of course, the whole kumbaya, the welcoming of the Lord, but also connecting. Now, if you're a person that requires connection with people, that's human. If you're a person that requires connection through people using money, that is also human. You've been socialized to do that. But there are societies, cultures, that may not have the money for you to use for connection. So there's music, there's fashion, there's food, there's festivals, there's free events, concerts. Tuesday, walk with the arts in maybe some local town is trying to revive their arts and cultural heritage. Now, I speak to you and into your life because I know something about this, because I know it about myself, and I'm not going to put it on me to say, you know, I'm this, I'm that, me, me, I want to put you in the topic of this discussion of connecting. And I know something about this because of being rejected by family, employment, politics, even a church that I gave all my money to, relationships when they find out I live with mental illness or bipolar. I get rejected by, actually I was dating a very famous, well, semi, well, famous liberal Jew in Hollywood and the first question he asked was about my money. So I told him and then he said, a disability? I didn't tell him I was disabled, but I talked and I furthered to explain my mental health. And now the government has been able to help me during severe psychiatric breaks and institutional voluntary stays in the hospitals. When you are not getting the connection that you need, whether it's mental health or whatever, scope, orientation, money, the things that I've kind of briefly laid out, you may typically become angry. You feel rejected, first of all. And then you're thinking about all the good that you've done. The bad doesn't matter because the good was done with a really pure heart. And so you wonder, why am I not getting this connection with somebody? It's a friend I've had for, let's say, you've had for three years, and then they start hanging up the phone on you when they're busy watching a movie. And it all really adds up to disrespect, doesn't it? Classlessness. When you make connections with people, it is a very uh, make or break you. Because people are very... Uh, opinionated, critical, judgmental. And they do it based on several things that you already know about. The standard of hygiene you use, which of course trickles into your wardrobe, clothing, jewelry, fashion, skin, are you fresh or do you smell, showering. The other one would be money. 
Okay. And of course, the physical health. Do you have in your package what they want? Okay. Which sometimes is genetics and it's not even in your control, but they'll still reject you for that. So when you feel the lack of connection, it's because you've been rejected based on something that you have absolutely no control over. Another thing that people will reject you on is level of education and vocabulary, the way you speak. Now, all these things I list may be somebody's criteria for stamping on you. Boom. You have class. You have sophistication. But of course, you know that money cannot buy somebody class, correct? Sometimes if they don't have manners, but they have money, right away you know it's kind of classlessness, isn't it? But when we talk about class and sociology, there's two types of class. There's class with economic money, neighborhood where you live, the schools that you studied at, and the other class will be the way you speak to people. This is the class that I am focused on in my own character building, and also in looking at character defects that I may have. As I say this for myself, I do it elusively so that maybe you can kind of get the idea that that's the way you can measure class and sophistication. So whatever your stance is, as to the relation of money or the way you talk to people. What you say is class. Either way, you're still maybe at a 90% chance of getting rejected and not losing connection with people. Now, years ago, I was looking for connection with my own manhood because I had a bit of a loss of psychological masculinity because of Christianity and men in my family. And of course, broken down relationships in the gay community. Very quickly, my need for connection grew more and more uh, heartaching for me. It's made my heart very achy. Because I started going toward things such as substance abuse, sex, pornography, being a porn star even. No, the porn video is not released, so you're not going to be able to look at it, sorry. But I tried different things in the orientation persuasion that I had, which was same gender, being gay. And as I was failing in the connecting, I had to get arrested because of meth. I was connecting with men through methamphetamines. So then I sobered up. The, of course, new drug of choice is caffeine. And I, I began to think, I'm not in a relationship. I don't have any solid friendships with men that are non-judgmental. The solid friendships might come in the form of gay, or I mean, uh, straight, Christian, anti-gay sentiments. So I relapsed because I was looking for a connection. Now, what I want you to do, I just say this about myself, because when you are in the uh, adamant and diligence of making solid connections with people that are worth your time, where you're establishing a long-term friendship with these people, you must be very cautious of what is being used for you to make that connection? Sometimes it may be as minuscule of an idea for you as, hey, I'm in a good mood and I have love in my heart and I feel great. Sometimes it may be the, well, you know, he gives me free weed. Um, he pays for the mill. Mostly we cut it down the half. He, uh, Let's make it the most expensive, he gets the cheapest, and so he ends up paying more of my meal than I have to pay. So, you know, I get something out of it. 
these all minute connections. When I'm talking about the connection of the soul, connecting with another man and his soul, I'm talking about something that has to do with a high a high level of sophistication already in your mind because you've done the work on yourself, you've done the work of the soul, or you've began it. It's an ongoing work, you know that, for the rest of your life. So when you get angry and bitter, pissed off, hateful, and you can connect it and connect the dots, to a certain event of you not being connecting properly, or people not connecting with you, such as reciprocation, gift giving, sharing. I, I make this mention because you must know what your heart and what your mind is making the connection for. You can't go out ignorant and just connecting. Or you're going to find yourself being a slut, you're sleeping around, you're using some drugs. You're connecting in different ways and you're kind of all over the board and you're just taking connections from all over the world because why? You're open-minded. This is a good place to be, but you have to take note on a fully permanent, lifelong connection that you're giving with people and you are receiving back then you become less likely to become angry, pissed off, you lose a sense of control. So I want you men to challenge your week or your month or maybe the rest of your life on this. Just say, hey, you know, I want to connect with men. Does that mean sucking dick? Does it mean barebacking and not using a condom and putting myself at risk of getting an STD or HIV or AIDS? So connecting is also including the physical, the temporal, the transitory, the fleeting. In you connecting with the world, because we're humans and we have to connect, I want it to be about mind, body, soul, spirit, not just spirit. I don't want you to knock off the physical need that you have to connect. That might be being held, cuddling, something very pure, might be making love in a committed relationship, or maybe a friends with the benefits, have you, what have you is this complexity of the many moving parts of your life, some more physical, some more emotional, some more scientific and medical, some more carnal, savage. And as you're identifying at a higher level of consciousness, this connecting, you're going to be able to provide yourself a better mental health outlook for your own humane life sustainability so that when you're scared or you're frightened you have the capacity to make I don't want to use the word solid connection because every connection is inevitably solid because there's something to be gained and something to be received a give and take but let's talk about intelligent connecting, correct? The connection of intelligence. This is so keen. 
it's basically wrapping it up for whatever spiritual teaching you feel you need at New World Christ Church or anything you need for lecturing, a talk that I give you through Social Alchemy Project, Access Management, your life coaching, your Tyler Lord Hamilton University College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, or even just a, a, a bit of advice you've gotten through this talk that could help you in the arts and entertainment industry. Because when you tell a story, right, and you get rid of all cares behind you, and you tell your story through your song, you're using connection. I love you, and please, when you go forward and connect with men, be thoughtful, be intelligent, because this is going to be the best antidote, the best remedy, medication, soothing cream for your heavy heart, and also your mental illness. That's what you live with. I love you.